Today's throwback. Today's throwback. Preview project politics of water in Colonial Lagos, part two. Yesterday's piece, part one, established the fact that the Europeans and the educated natives had perceived the need for portable water supply, at least in their residential and working quarters on the island of Lagos. Since the formal colonial administration which came into being after the 1861 session of Lagos increased their numbers, hence colonial governor Sir John Glover's palliative policy of sinking modern wells between 1862 and 1864. The peace also established the superfluity of the water reticulation or piping network project to the large population of uneducated natives who, one, hadn't been to Europe and couldn't have been familiar with modern reticulation technology or the earth uh, this thing that it gives, and two, never felt they had a clean water supply problem like the paranoid Europeans and the educated natives. It was in the backdrop of these differences of values and the nearly five decades of delay in the implementation of the public water articulation policy due to its prohibitive cost that a very responsive and popular urban of Lagos, Ishubayi, Aka, Eleko of Eko, ascended his tour of the Soviets in 1901. And the expansive colonial government, after the amalgamation of Lagos Colonial and Southern Protectorate in 1906, commenced the very costly Jew Water Works project. As it was the tradition of the British colonialists, either in their colonies or at the Colonial and Commonwealth Office in Whitehall, London, they wanted the resources of the colonized territory to either directly or indirectly pay and obviate the cost of any project executed in the colony. This instructed the colonial government's decision to levy an unpopular water tax on Lagos. Obai Shubai was not in support of the tax too, as it isn't that the water project was essentially beneficial, was essentially going to be beneficial to the Europeans and the very few educated elite, but not to the majority of his people who the Europeans wanted to pay for the water project. The colonial government further took offense against Eleko because of the public protest and looting of the European shops that the unpopular policy caused. This umbrage and the resolve of the colonial authorities to avenge, avenge it made them to humiliate the Oba when the Oba approved the appointment of four Jumat Muslims to the titles of Balogu Musulumi, Basharu Musulumi, Seriki Musulumi, and the Bay at the Central Mosque of Lagos. The colonial government objected that he had no powers to meddle in the Muslim meddle in Muslims' religious matters, that it was the exclusive responsibility of the leadership of the Lagos Central Mosque and the colonial government. But ironically, very rich and leading Muslims of Lagos then fully supported the Oba and they constituted the majority of the Lu committee's members who, when the colonial government under the vindictively manipulative Lord Lugard withdrew the Eleko's stipend, generously supplied his wants before the ineffective punitive measure was reversed. This was the acrid socio-cultural milieu of Lagos when Albert Macaulay, one of the very few educated natives that supported the anti-water tax position of Eleko and the preponderant majority of the natives. Indeed, it was the meeting note taker, often misconstrued to be secretary of the Ilu committee, sneaked the Eleko staff of office to London and used it in getting justice and adequate compensation at the Privy Council of the House of Lords, the British Supreme Court then, for white cap chief Tijani Oluwa of the Oluwa clan on the unfairly acquisition of Papa land by the colonial authorities. As it was typical of Abad Macaulay, he also painted a despicable picture of how the Oba of Lagos, who he referred to as the King of Nigeria because his predecessor signed the Lagos Treaty of Session that established the first British colony, the colony of Lagos in the territory now known as Nigeria, was being humiliated and remunerated below what was agreed in the treaty. The colonial government wanted the Eleko to denounce the claim of Abba Macaulay, which he did, 
but they preferred him to publicly adopt a version scripted by Henry Carr, the equivalent of the native governor and the highest African in the colonial administration, known officially as the resident of Lagos, that he refused to do. He was detained and sent to first exile in Oyo, where he stayed for the short duration of Oba Ibikunle Akitoye, who died and was succeeded by Sanusi Olusi, whose unpopular reign was judicially cut short by the Privy Council's reinstatement order of Oba Ishubaye Leko in 1931 until he died in 1932. In conclusion, and this is one of my fervent passions, especially to the younger generations in whom I place my faith for the redemption of this nation. Notwithstanding your revulsion for your oppressors, notwithstanding your revulsion for your oppressors, like the Elecos, the members of the ILU committees, the Abamakolis for the colonial government, and the perceived traitors in your ranks, like Kito Yajasa or Enrica ETC, learn their relative excellence and be ready to pay the price for sustainable development. Water may be free, but the cost of piping it clean to homes and for the good health of people is obviously not free. And that's it on the show tonight. I am Bola Oba. Have a good weekend. <laughs>